This is The Unholy Union. A podcast where you'll be subjected to highly offensive marital discourse. If you do not feel insulted during this week's episode, don't worry, we'll try harder next week. If you can relate to our ramblings, we want to be friends with you. If you believe that we take it too far or our mouths are too much for you, then with as much love and sincerity as we can muster, you can suck it. Welcome to The Unholy Union. We're going to start this episode a little differently than we've done the rest. Yeah? <laughs> okay. Where's my woo? Uh, yeah. Thank you. You're a little delayed there. <laughs> Pick it up next time. I didn't know what to say. Okay. So for us, th- the episode that we did with Chris Johnson and the interview for Canopy Road Cafe was our 20th episode. Yes. So we've been doing this for a little bit now. That's well, I can't remember how many we released back in 2020 or 2019 is what it was. Yeah. I think we had maybe three previous episodes. So we've done 17 new ones. Okay. Good math. That's 17 weeks, though. That's a lot. Yeah. We have been staying habitual with it. We have been trying to bring all of the fun and crazy and wet and wild information to you why <laughs> moist you'd like that i knew you'd like it uh-huh. yeah that's good <laughs> but we're gonna start this episode a little differently and just say thank you yes let's say thank you who, who are we gonna start with to those who have purchased merchandise who have purchased merch which goes towards show the show and development of new episodes keeping our equipment up to date and not sounding like dog shit you know, everything like that. So I am going to list off everyone who bought some merch. Let's hear it. Our first thank you is to Steph C. from Arkansas. Our next is from Micah R. from Florida. And then another one is Kim S. from Florida. Another one (laughs) is Aaron S. from Ohio. And then we have two more. One is Cody Y from Florida and Lisa R from Nebraska. Thanks, guys. Thank you. We we do appreciate it. And I hope that the shirts or whatever you bought turned out nice. Yes. (laughs) Don't (laughs) add us for it, but... There's a support system on there. You contact them and tell them it's a piece of shit. (laughs) I don't print these shirts. I don't house these shirts in my garage. They are print on demand, so yell at them. But we can't thank you enough for all of your support through merchandise or through contributions or whatever you so decide. I mean, I would love to see more people rocking on Holy Union shirt or hat. I mean. Yeah, and I want to thank me for buying a giant ass sticker to put on the van. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Snoop Dogg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome yourself. Yeah. Okay. I funded the show. <laughs> well, I think we also want to thank the individuals who have been recently on the show. Uh, Ronnie Thomas of Ronnie Ron's Barbecue. Yes. And Chris Johnson of Canopy Road Cafe. We can't thank you guys enough for being on and appreciate you contributing to the show in yes. the con form of content and we look forward to more interviews with more people and if you have any suggestions on who to interview email me or send me a tweet yeah we're looking for local people right that are doing awesome and amazing things like just people who are every day killing it right yes like you, you don't have to be some multi-million billionaire to be important to your community so right and be heard Exactly. Anyone who is just doing the damn thing every day, right? I'd like to see us reach out further to not just people in Florida, which is what we've been doing recently, but not that that's a negative. Um, right. But I'd like to, to see us reach out further and focus on you know their accomplishments and things that they're doing in their everyday life. Me too. I have some ideas. I've got a few friends that started businesses in Virginia and stuff that I want to get on here. So eventually... Yeah, we've got we we've got a few people lined up willing to come on. So more to come on those interviews. But today we're going to focus on a trip that we just went on. Yay! No. There we go. Are we going to do that <laughs> at the top of every topic? Yes. Okay. Yay! Just wanted to make sure. So we went to Pennsylvania. We have family in Pennsylvania. Another wedding that we went to. This time it was for my cousin. 
beautiful wedding. I've gone to Pennsylvania, specifically the northwest area of Pennsylvania, essentially my whole life. That's where I have family located. Anyways, so just some highlights from the trip from while we were there. One of the things that I literally wrote down the moment it happened, uh, our daughter was playing a game. It's like bejeweled, you know, where you match the jewels and you get like power-ups, if you will. Candy crush. Right. Well, one of the power-ups was a bomb. And in the middle of boarding, (laughs) (laughs) our daughter is playing it until it's time to put the things away, right? And um, I, 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 me, I actually call out, use the bomb! (laughs) (laughs) On an airplane? In an airplane. Like, we were on the airplane, too. And everybody else was like, what the fuck? I know. I just, I don't know what came over me. And I literally had to take in where I was and remember, like, you don't say that word. It felt like Meet the Fockers. Remember that? Ben Stiller, where he goes, bomb, bomb, bomb. (laughs) You don't say that. (laughs) Yeah. So that was bad. But then still, during boarding on the plane, we're sitting in the plane and we notice, we look up and the ventilation seems to be putting out Smoke? It looked like smoke, but it's actually mist. Uh Uh-huh. You looked this up? I did look it up because I, if you've listened to the podcast, I have major flight anxiety. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm getting off this fucking plane. This bitch (laughs) is on fire. And it, I mean, the whole, from back, yeah, from the front to back, that motherfucker was smoking. (laughs) So I was panicking. I'm like, I'm not flying in this airplane. You're going to have to fuck. You're going to have to wait for me in Pennsylvania. I'm going to take a train or I'm going to drive. Well, I looked it up and it's because... In Florida, the outer atmosphere is very humid, Mm -hmm. and it contacts the AC unit, and then it turns into the, you know, it's essentially humid air Mm -hmm. that you can see. But, so don't panic. Right. It's normal. There were no bombs (laughs) that went off on the plane. Right. And it was not smoke. It was just... Mist. Mist. Essentially just humid air that you could see. But that flight was pretty rough. It was not a smooth flight, which is not good for my heart <laughs> or my underwear. <laughs> or for the person who has to sit in your seat next. Yeah, yeah. Or or for the people that sit next to me. <laughs> and it yeah, it was pretty rough though. I was surprised because every time we've flown like East Coast mm-hmm. and not gone to like Colorado, right. it's been a really smooth flight. Mm-hmm. It's like I don't know. For some reason, there's no turbulence. But this motherfucker, <laughs> I'm like, nope. It's we got. I can't. I'm not doing it. I'm not. I'm not coming home on an airplane because it was freaking me the hell out. Turbulence was not the best. Okay, so how much of that though? Like you talking about it right now, you're hyping it up. It wasn't that bad. I mean, yes, it was bumpier than a few of our other trips. It might not be that bad to you, but it's that bad right, to me. But like looking back on it, are you making it bigger than what it was? No, because looking back on it, me as a flight anxious person, any bump is going to freak me out. So when there's bumps, I freak out. I mean, but like in the moment, you didn't seem like you were you just holding it in. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't want to scare our kid. Like, right. oh my god, my dad's scared. Now I'm fucking scared. <laughs> oh, she's good. She's playing bejeweled with the bombs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On an airplane, <laughs> thirty-seven thousand feet. Well, speaking of our kiddo, we forgot one of her toys in the hotel. Yes. It's so sad. Yeah, I know. It was I like her really favorite sleeper. I really feel like I try to be on top of all that stuff because you're freaking out about traveling. I feel like I really try to be on top of where not only us as people are, but our shit. Yes. And I forgot the damn toy. Luckily, though, she didn't freak out like I thought she was going to. I thought she was, too, because, like, going to bed with that toy is a thing. What she does. That's her. That's her ritual for bed. Her what it cuddly, snuggly, yeah, snuggly. What is it I don't know, stuffed animal. Oh, I forget. It's a little teeny tiny turtle. Right. So she got a new turtle to replace the old one. Um, you know, all is well in the world, but just like I don't know why, but traveling just it never feels like you can be a hundred percent when traveling. Well, it doesn't help the fact that 
you know, we're traveling. We're not really traveling for vacation. We're traveling for, you know, visiting family. Now that sounds like a vacation, but we're constantly ripping Mm -hmm. and running. Well, right. There's a point, an itinerary, an agenda. There's no downtime during this type of trip. So you, you feel kind of rushed. We're just constantly moving, like rushing around. Right. So it's just hard to be on your game, your A game with well, that going on. And then we had multiple things happen. <laughs> and why? when I mean multiple, I mean at least 50. <laughs> tiny little things. Tiny little things that are a fucking nightmare. Ticks. Yes. He means ticks. <laughs> So our daughter was playing with her cousins and, you know, in our relative's yard, running up and down the yard and doing. Oh, no, not running. I'm rolling. Yeah, yeah, like, but that's that's what kids do. It's Pennsylvania, so it's mountainous. Yeah. And our, our grandma, she lives on a hill mm-hmm. and it's a steep ass hill. So what are you going to do? Yeah. I wanted to roll down the hill. <laughs> but so that's what they did. They rolled down the hill. Well, we bring. Our daughter back to the hotel room that night after the day's over and all that. We visited family for the whole day. And you asked me, I remember, I think you asked me on the way home, should we check her for ticks? I was like, nah, she's she's good. Well, you laid down with her in bed. And I can't remember. I think you noticed it on her head. Was it on her head? Mm-hmm, yeah. On her forehead. Yeah, on her forehead. You said, is that a tick? And I got over there and. Sure as shit. Sure as shit. It was a tick. It and it was deer tick. Uh-huh. The teeny tiny ones look like a ballpoint pen, speck of dirt. Yes. Except when you try and brush it off, it don't come off. Right. And I couldn't believe it because I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe she just did pick up one. Well, I told her, you know, come in the bathroom. Let me take your shirt off and stuff so we could inspect you just in case. Yep. We oh, both. my God. Started looking at this poor child. And there were at least... 50 At head li- to toe. I think there was probably more than that, but we caught them so soon they weren't latched on yet. And mm-hmm. we, you know, we th- immediately picked the ones we s- we did see off. Yep. We threw her in the shower. Yep. You know, I scrubbed the heck out of her. <laughs> we checked her the next morning, checked her the next evening. I mean. We were there for four days and we checked her twice a day for every one of those days. Yep. So Tex. T- oh, wonderful. Well, well, we did learn about ticks from the doctor because, you know, in, in our panic, we called them and asked them, like, what do we do? They said, as long as you get them off, what was it, 24 to 48 36 hours? 36 to 48. 36 to 48 hours, and they're not under the skin or engorged, which you should be able to see if they've been sucking on your blood for a long time. Mm-hmm. As long as you catch them before that point. No you're worries. Good. You're good. Yeah. Yep. I guess they... There's a time period where they can actually transfer Lyme's disease. Yep. And that's the big worry with deer ticks is yes. Lyme's disease. Yep. And to have 50 on this poor child. Um, but our nephews had them on them too. Yes. Yep. Um, didn't sound like as many as our daughter, but they had them on them too. So it was definitely something they rolled in because none of the adults had any on them. Exactly. So it was in the grass. Yeah. For sure. And because that happened to our kiddos... <laughs> I decided to choose you cho- violence. You chose violence. Yep. Yeah. I I asked, you know, I asked Lynn's to ask her grandmother if we could destroy her yard. <laughs> Not destroy her destroy yard. Destroy the pick. Yeah. To, I, the I, parasites. I wanted to put insecticides down on the yard in granule form. So I asked her if she had a spreader. And I went to Walmart, or I didn't go to Walmart. We had your parents go to Walmart, buy the stuff. And I'm like, it's hot as hell out here, but we have to get this done. Mm-hmm. And those ticks are no more. Yep. Goodbye, ticks. <laughs> it was awful. <sighs> yeah, that was a highlight. Um, the, well, the worst part about it, too, I think, is trying to check a little girl's head. Right. That is one of my, honestly biggest parenting fears from when she was teeny tiny is she has fine hair but she has a lot yes. of fine hair it stacks on top of each other uh-huh so for me i've always thought like how am i ever going to check her head 
How can I thoroughly check her hair to make sure that I've gone through every part of it? And this was a very good experience. I felt like I went through ERP therapy with this. That's not funny. (laughs) I was exposed to this and I had to come up with a method, right? So just taking little sections at a time and combing through each. With a flashlight because and that's one thing that I will say you should use is get you a headlamp. (laughs) If you can or have your husband or your wife or whatever, someone hold it for you because – Really brightens up the scalp yep. when there's shadows because of the hair. And yep. you, you, I'm telling you, I can't express how small these things are. Yes. Ball, ballpoint pin head. Yep. That's how small they are. So you have to pay attention. It's not like you can't even feel them if you're like trying to, you know, touch. You can't feel them. Yep. You have to see them. Yeah. So that was fun. No, it wasn't. I've got PTSD. Let's move on. <laughs> So one of the other things, two other points here about our trip to Pennsylvania, we saw Amish. Yes, people. we did. We saw an, uh, two uh, two separate Amish families on the road, and I want to dive into the Amish here in just a minute because I find it fascinating. I do too. But we also saw the Canadian wildfire smoke. Yeah, all the way in northwest Pennsylvania. Right, and it was bad. It mm-hmm. was bad the first day. I remember coming down in it, and they were like, "We're on our descent." You know, we have about 15 minutes before landing. And I'm like, you know, it's got to be 15 minutes. And you look out the window, you can't see anything. Yep. But then all of a sudden, you see the fucking ground, like, really close. Mm -hmm. I was like, holy shit, we're going to (laughs) crash. No, no. But it was because the wildfire smoke Mm -hmm. reduced visibility so much that you couldn't see until you were almost on top of the, the runway. Yep. So some facts about this smoke, right? From March of this year to present, these wildfires have been burning. Mm -hmm. June was when they have been the most intense, and it doesn't sound like they've slowed down very much since June. Right. I'm pretty sure everyone has seen the picture of the smoke in New York at this point that just covered the skyline that you couldn't even see the city. Right. But while we were there in Pennsylvania, we saw it too, and we're in coal country, where my grandmother lives, and you couldn't really even see the mountaintops. I know. that That's what's crazy to me is, like, you go out there, and it is it is pretty mm-hmm. if you like that kind of thing. But normally you look out, you can't see far anyway there mm-hmm. because it's mountainous. It's You are literally in a valley yep. surrounded by mountains. You couldn't even see the fucking mountains, and they're, like, 10 feet away. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, but there's since- ticks. <laughs> We're moving on from the text. Um, so since, well, actually, this is a report from June 7, 2023, that says 3,000 fires have burned more than 31,000 square miles, which is an area larger than South Carolina. And that was back in June 7th. Right. So to today, like that has gone up. Oh, for sure. And it's specific to different, oh, dang it, I didn't write the word down. The different provinces of Canada, Mm -hmm. British Columbia, Ontario, and Quebec. Those are the three areas that have the most prominent wildfires right now. But the idea that it's been going on for this long and that we in the United States are getting that smoke impact. We have family in Virginia and they've seen it. Yep. They've seen it all the way down in Virginia. It's crazy. It is. It is. And it, it can't be good for you to breathe that shit. Well, I... I mean, I don't think I felt like a breathing impact, but you can definitely tell like it's in the air. You can almost smell it. I smelled it. Mm-hmm. It smelled like shit. But I don't I think mean, it like, like burning. Impacted our breathing. We, maybe we weren't there long enough. But for those who are who live there, you would think maybe it is pa- impacting the respiratory system. I don't know. I, I I just can't see how that's. You can see the particulate stuff in the air, mm-hmm. so you know you're breathing it in. Yep. That can't be good for you. Right. There's a lot of conspiracies going on about those wildfires, too. There's satellite images and videos of seemingly all those fires started at the same exact time. Okay, Tin Hat. <laughs> I don't, I'm just, you can't, we talk about this, 
You have to question everything. I know. Get your information from all sides and then find your middle. Find That's right. Your truth. To f- make your own determination on what you think is real and not real. And if those videos were true, it looked like they all started at the same fucking time. I'm getting scared, though, because AI can make anything look real. Oh, I know. They, they already have. They've got a, a fake debate of Trump and Biden on YouTube or something, and it... it Okay, you can kind of tell it's fake just because... Well, people don't look real in AI yet. Well, but they can... I don't know. Have you seen the deep fakes of Tom Cruise? Well, that's an actual person, though, isn't it? No, I don't think so. I think that's a... That is computer generated on his face. Oh. He talks, and the computer is able to make his voice sound like Tom Cruise and everything. Oh. We already talked about voice stealing and scamming, so... It actually happened to Will Friedle, his parents, I believe. Who's Will Friedle? From Boy Meets World, Pod Meets World podcast. Yeah, uh, duh. Jesus. Je- no, plays with squirrels. Oh, he, yeah, but you know, he looked like Jesus. No, he <laughs> play with, plays with squirrels. Okay, get your fact straight. Okay, back on topic. Yes. So the fire, the smoke, we felt it, we saw it. The other thing I said was Amish, right? So we we're driving down the road. And you start seeing signs for horse and buggy. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yes, yeah, so you start seeing signs for the horse and buggy. And it says like for the next X miles, like any deer crossing or whatever you would see. But our daughter goes, what's that? What does that mean? And sure as shit, we see one on the road. Two on the road. Two lane road. Horse and buggy. Huge family on the buggy. There was like 15 people in one of these buggies, man. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, I can't fit 15 people in this fucking car. I feel (laughs) bad for that horse. Uh Uh-huh. And it got to the point where you, Russ, wanted to roll down the windows and hear the horse clap, clap, clap. And we did, and it was awesome. (laughs) So it sounds like we both have a fascination with the Amish at the moment. I, I There's something that, I don't know, it's... It it seems like being separated from society as much as they are sounds appealing. We'll get to that in just a second. Listen to this. So according to an Elizabethtown College population study, there are 74,250 Amish in Pennsylvania, which is about 23% of the total Amish population in the United States. Ohio is second with 73,780. Kids in the Amish community graduate at eighth grade, and then they go on to begin real-world experiences. They're involved with things in the family or the community from that point forward. Building and all that, Mm -hmm. yeah. Baking, cooking. So there's four values that the Amish live by, which is faith, family, community, and simplicity. So faith is church every other Sunday and living the Word of God every day. Family is multi-generations in one home, helping raise and helping elder family members take care of them. Then community, they all support each other financially, spiritually, and physically. So if someone needs help raising a barn or doesn't have enough money or the simplicity of it is related to what they wear as well as technology. They don't try to conform to societal norms. So the population is actually growing rapidly due to the multiple kids in a family, that they can have seven to ten kids. Well, we saw that on that buggy. Right. (laughs) But I think there's more to it than that. Like, the way all these articles are making it sound is that it's because of them having multiple children. But I wonder if there's an aspect of conversion to it, too. I don't doubt it. Right? Because... Like you just said, there's some sort of attraction to the idea of simplicity. Yeah, I mean, the fact that it almost brings you back to like colonial era where you didn't really work and get paid dollars. You worked like if you were a blacksmith, Mm -hmm. you'd make somebody a tool. Yep. Then they would pay you with, I don't know, say the tool was a rake. And it, he, this guy was a farmer. He would pay you in whatever his farm produced. Right. There was no... It was barter system. It was barter. And that's awesome to me. It's like, you, you're you good at this. And you're going to be paid well for this. Because you're, gonna, you're getting paid 
what you produce and then you trade to someone else. Right. Isn't that what they do? Yes, but they also do like farm stands and they do get financial, like actual dollar bills to use to help their entire community right. sustain those kind of things. But yes, amongst themselves within their community, no, they don't exchange dollars right. for things. They exchange things mm -hmm. like what you need to live. And I don't know, there's something about that lifestyle that makes me want to try it for a week. <laughs> I wonder if we could last. Honestly. I don't know. I mean, I feel like so the hardest thing for me would probably be my cell phone because like a lot of people, I'm there. Game scroll. I'm I'm very addicted to my cell phone. It's almost like a part of you mm -hmm. after you use it for a long enough period of time. But that would be my hard part. But other than that, it just seems like it would be super nice. You're there. You focus on a next task. You're constantly moving because you have to. You have to kind of provide for your family by making what you do mm -hmm. and then trading it to someone else. But as a community, you stay afloat because you rely on each other. So that creates much better relationships. It's almost like the dollar bill has ruined community because you, you get paid from your job. Mm -hmm. Then you go to Publix. And buy food, which Publix isn't a person. Right. But in the Amish community, I may I will go chop down some wood for you so you can build a barn, but I want I want a steak. Mm -hmm. So you know that guy that's getting you that that that's gonna butcher a cow. Yep. Or whatever it is. You know that guy. You're yep. friends with him because of that. Like you guys have a symbiotic relationship. And you can't survive without each other. That creates a fucking huge, huge way of bonding and community aspect. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't get that when you're buying shit from Publix. Right. Publix doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, obviously they do. Publix, Publix is uh, still a business, though. Right. It's not a person. It's not a single person or a family. Like, the. Well, I mean, what's an Amish name? I don't know. But you know my point. Like the, Isaiah. The, yeah, yes. The Isaiahs. They make cheese. Oh. I love fucking cheese, man. But I make garden tools. They need my garden tools to this, make that cheese. This example is wonderful. <laughs> like I just feel like you're connecting so many dots for so many people. But I just but you you get what I'm saying. Yeah. You are personally involved with where you get your stuff right instead of a faceless corporation well and that's one of the things that they say about the children with education is they go through till eighth grade and then they get into the real world experiences they're part of the family part of the community part mm. of the community constantly involved and contributing so i feel like Maybe I seriously, I wondered this and I couldn't find anything on the Internet about it. But if conversion plays into a factor at all with the Amish population, because I think for children, it would be really easy for them to conform. Right. To that yeah, lifestyle. I think so, too, because, I mean, it's, it's all they ever know. Right. But for adults to do it, to um, convert. Right. Yeah. For adults to convert, I wonder what that rate is and if they stay in that community, like, forever. Because I, to yeah. go from this, like you said, with your cell phone and technology and money, and to go from this... Yeah, but how how much lower do you think your stress levels would be? Well, I think it's a different kind of stress because you have to be involved in the community and you're invested in that and you have to constantly be contributing. You can't sit around and take a nap whenever you want. Yeah, but yes, you could. Like, No, you couldn't. No. There, if you're not a contributing member, then you're not living by the four values I just told you. Okay. But you're working with your hands, and you're doing things that you're good at, and you're contributing directly to somebody. I feel like that makes a lot of sense to lower your stress levels, it seems more like like you would be more proud of what you do. Yeah, I get that. 
I think there would be a sense of community, right? Yes. You you are contributing. But for someone who is in societal norm, we'll say, to go into that type of lifestyle, it might not be as stressful or demanding as we think this lifestyle is, but it's on a different level, right? You have to be contributing or you're not a, an effective member of that community. So there is pressure. But there's actually a movie about this and do, we're going to watch it. <laughs> do you come do you have to commute in traffic? I mean, I don't know. No, I, but you're constantly doing something. And that yeah, but it's a it, it's like a farmer, right? It's a sense of community though. Mhm. And I feel like because you own the product that you're making, you're more prideful and you will be less stressed because you're going to be a fucking savage at it. You know, you're not going to be like I don't know if I'm doing this right. It's like, no, I know I'm doing this right because everybody in this place is happy with my stuff. Right. I don't know. Hmm. Sounds sounds cool to me. Let's go try it. <laughs> I wonder if they do that. If you could like Airbnb and live the life. Because they do it for ranches. Like you could go. An Airbnb. Uh... Well, you can go like to Yellowstone and you can be on a ranch for a day. Or... Yeah, I don't know. What I... if you could be Amish for a day? <laughs> I mean, you can. we can try it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they they had a uh so my old boss from my old job, she went up there and did a like a cookie tour where she would go into the Amish certain Amish people had opened their houses up for this thing and they would bake cookies together mm -hmm. and sell them. Well, she was able to pick up a newspaper. A mm -hmm. She bought a newspaper from them and it is the weirdest thing. That they are completely shut off from society, and it's basically, I don't know. I don't know an Amish name. Isaiah over here. Isaiah built Jimothy a nice wagon, and Jimothy is super happy. And it's that's all it is. Mm -hmm. It's local. And yep. that's it, because that's all it is. That's all <laughs> they have. Mm -hmm. They don't have this international news stuff right? that... They're worried about or the see, and that's the other thing. Less stress because they don't have a computer to go on and doom scroll with. And to know everything that's going on in the entire world. Right. And yeah, they might know what their neighbor's doing. Yep. He's making cheese. You know, but I there's something appealing about being completely removed from the pressures of our society. Oh, I agree. I totally agree. And if I never have to travel again, it'll be too soon. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, they travel by horse and buggy, so you don't have to worry about. <laughs> yeah, you go in what, maybe a 200-mile radius, if that far? Yeah. Anywho, so I'm not traveling anymore because I got sick this past time as well. And What do you mean as well? Well, so we went to... I went to St. Louis for work. Then I went to Virginia for your cousin's wedding and now Pennsylvania for my cousin's wedding. And each time I got sick. Yeah. Well, I got sick this time too. Yeah. That's I got, crazy. I got norovirus. Lovely. It was awful. And if I just get body aches. I don't know if I'm just run down after it or. Well, this trip got a little rough because of the tick thing. I mean. I guess. We were. Don't say that word ever again. Stressing hard about making sure she had none on her. Right. Well, do you want to hit some other headlines? Sure. Let's not focus on us anymore. Let's go to other headlines. Have you heard about this whole thing between Zuckerberg and Musk? Yes, the fight. Well, it's more than that now. What is it? So Meta has decided to take on Twitter with threads for text-based platform. Yeah. Or, I'm sorry. For a text-based platform called Threads. Yeah, I, we're on it. Who's we? The podcast. Really? Yeah, I made one as soon as it came out to try to jump on the, the popularity wave to get our name out there. Look at you. I, I just saw it as a headline. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even know? No. It's like, it's got like, I, I can't remember the last number I saw, but 30 million. High five. Good yeah, job. Yeah. 30, Good for you. 30 million people are on it already. Well, it's that type of fighting, I think, that is really happening. But to your point, there's the idea that Zuckerberg and Musk might actually fight in real life. Per Perry, Perrier, Perrier, Perrier. George St. Pierre. Thank you. <laughs> 
oh, I've got a headache. Okay, so George St. Pierre actually came out and said that he's willing to train Elon Musk for the fight. I think he did. Did or, train or, him? or At least one session. Oh. I think so, yeah. I thought I saw a picture of all of them together. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. Well, Elon Musk has decided that he wants it to be at the Coliseum in Rome, Italy. I don't think he decided that. I think, well, he may have agreed, but the Italian government contacted both of them and asked them or told them they could use the Coliseum. Oh, my God. The Italian government. That would be the funniest shit. They need to They need to have spears and shit then. And, and, Between the two richest men in the world. Well, I mean, if they're going to fight in the fucking Coliseum, you need to make it authentic. Yeah, and Bezos can be the referee. Um, oh, <laughs> that motherfucker's swole, though. I wouldn't want to fight him. I, it just seems like this keeps snowballing. Like, either well, it's the best publicity stunt that's ever happened, or this is real and it's one day going to happen. It's starting to seem like, I think, Elon's personal lawyer has threatened legal action against Threads because of, I I think Facebook hired a lot of prior Twitter employees mm. and like last year non-competes and now they have this and they said you hired a bunch of our previous employees proprietary information yep, all you're that taking a, uh-huh. so i don't know how that's going to play out if it's actually going to go through i think they made legal threats official legal threats you know but we'll see yeah i've been watching suits for the first time that that series called suits mm-hmm. for the first time and i feel like i know so much legal jargon right now like but I you can don't just, hey <laughs> <laughs> that is libel. No, it isn't, because that's my point. You need to move into Amish country. Yeah, that would be lovely. Okay, so the last headline that I saw that I thought was of interest is Roman numerals NXIVM, Nexium. Have you heard about this? Nope. Again, this is one of the things that sounds huge and big, and I feel like I knew nothing about it. Isn't Nexium a uh, antacid? I don't know. Yes, <laughs> but this is actually a sex trafficking ring. Oh, my God. And this individual who was the second in command, she was actually an actress in a show, I think, called Smallville. She's oh, now out of prison. I know about this. This was this happened. She went to jail a while back. Right. So series of events, right? Back in 2017, the New York Times essentially had a whistleblower, a source, that basically busted this whole thing wide open and said that it's a sex trafficking ring. This company had been around for decades and finally New York Times in 2017 put out a report and busted it wide open. Good. Then there was a documentary called The Vow on HBO in 2022. And in the meantime, between 2017 through 2022, There's court cases of all the people who were involved and the big head honcho CEO is was put in jail for 120 years. Okay, for his crimes. That's not enough. Hmm. So now anybody who does that to a person needs to be put down. Agreed. But now there's also a new movie coming out called A Sound of Freedom. That's out now, I believe. Yes. Yeah. And it's from Angel Productions, which is Mel Gibson's production company. Right. And it's all about sex trafficking. I don't understand. And maybe it's just me. Like, if you heard about the story, please let me know, uh, you know, previous to this podcast. But I feel like this wasn't made big enough a deal. Like, how did I not hear about any of Nexium? I, I did, but I didn't grasp how big it was yeah like, I, right i didn't i didn't know that they went to jail I, I i passing headline reading essentially right but why isn't it made out to be a bigger deal i don't know it's 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 creepy it's weird and people need to get the worst punishment possible for shit like that because you're talking about stealing a life yep you are taking someone's entire future away from them yep and turning them into a whatever you want. Exactly. And that's, uh, don't get me started. That makes me fucking mad. Because mm-hmm. they're, they're targeting children, too. Yep. And that's one of the reasons why I, I want to watch this movie, A Sound of Freedom. 
but I really don't know if I can stomach it. I'm not the type of person that can handle things that happen to children or torture right. or like I, sex, I can't. Sex trafficking and all that stuff is all bad, but like taken, that made me want to throw up and I was squirming in my seat the entire time. Yeah. It was horrible. Like, but I'm I just say I'm just saying, like, when you target children, it, that makes me fucking enraged. Mm-hmm. But it's all bad. Yep. It's just I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like these type of stories need to be given way more light and given way more attention. Well, well that Nexium thing, it it you just said it was Hollywood, right? Part of Hollywood. Yeah, stuff. there's a bunch of actresses, act, actors, actresses who were involved and went to jail. Unreal. Yeah. So, it, well, maybe does that correlate the people on the screen or the people that control the screens? Maybe they don't want you to see that type of control footage. media. Yeah, maybe they don't I want you to not. know. I don't know because that's again a, a scary, crazy idea. Well. There's, I can't remember the number, but it's a very low number on who controls what you see on TV. Yep. I think and there's what, maybe three broadcasts? I think there's three media conglomerates in the U.S. that controls what you see. Yep. Three. That's terrible. Mm-hmm. Because how can you find the truth? You can't. You have to take it upon yourself to go on the internet. And they're trying to police that now, too. I think, can't remember what state it was, but they they either passed or they're working on passing an anti-hate speech bill. Mm-hmm. It would charge you like 10 grand for saying something that's they, they deem hate speech. I'm like, here we go. Uh, here we go. This this is uh, hate speech is bad. You know, I agree. But is it violent? Are you threatening? Is it illegal? Mm-hmm. No. OK, then. Trash this person on social media cancel or whatever. Them. Yeah, cancel them. But let's not throw them in prison or or charge them ten grand for saying, I don't know, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever it is. Yep, that's their. That's what they want to think. They can be a piece of crap. Yep, to themselves. It's not going to hurt hurt you. You said crap. Piece of shite. <laughs> I'm proper. Uh huh. Sounds like it. Well, on that note. Anything you want to close us off with? No, I, I I think maybe next week or the week after that, we're going to do a Reddit sewer episode. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to scour Reddit and try to find the best or funniest or even weirdest <gasps> threads. You're going to build content? Yeah, I think I've got one right now that I found. There's a really good Reddit out there called Am I the Asshole? Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've heard of it. No. Well... People do things, obviously. People do things. <laughs> and then they think about it and they're like, am I the asshole? Uh-huh. And they'll post it on there and get votes. Like, am I the asshole for peeing on accident in my boyfriend's car because I drank too much? You know, things like that. And uh-huh. then people will comment and say, yes, you're an asshole. or And then give the reason why you're an asshole. But there's a good one on there right now that I would be very interested to get your take on. So next week, we're going to probably record that one and stay tuned because I think it's going to be a good one. <laughs> uh huh. You're saying that because you are building the content. Well, it's Reddit is it can be depending on where you go on Reddit. It can be a fucking shithole. <laughs> <laughs> and I like I mean, I'm not going to say anything too bad on it on on about Reddit and pull in really bad threads just because it can get really bad. But. We'll go through some funny shit. And you're, you're getting like softer and softer as you talk. So I feel like this is more and more serious it, and you're building it up. And well, the, the, you can find a lot of weird shit on Reddit, and, but I'm not going to pull that into the episode. <laughs> It'll give me nightmares researching it. <laughs> well, great. So next episode, we'll talk about the Reddit and maybe we'll do some more interviews coming hopefully, up. Hopefully we can schedule one. Love you. Toodles. It's what you do with the things you love.